What's going on everyone, Jeremy here from The Quartering and today's Last of Us 2 update is a spicy one. We've got some streamers refusing to play the game. We've also got voice actors blaming bots for the uh, bad scores and much more. Now, as of Friday, it appears, at least when I've tried to leave a review on Metacritic, it's not working. Now, that's entirely possible that this isn't working because of uh, the existing like review brigade that's going on. Now, yeah, people have a strong opinion on what's going on with this game. It currently has 12,150 user reviews, averaging a 3.3 user score. Now, I don't think it's a 3.3 game. You know, even if I if I take all of everything aside, there's probably very little way that this game is worse than a six. Uh, so, I mean, I acknowledge, I don't look at that three and say, oh, it's definitely a three out of 10 video game. I look at that three and I'm like, well, they pissed some people off. And by the way, you know what pisses me off? Nearly 40% of you aren't subscribed. Actually, it doesn't really make me mad, but I just thought it was a funny transition. If you're watching my video and you feel like I have earned your subscription. I don't just cover video games. I don't just cover the mess that is The Last of Us 2. I cover online censorship issues. I cover Hollywood issues, movies, streaming, Marvel Comics, DC, everything pop culture right here on The Quartering. And I hope that today will be the day that you hit that little red subscribe button below the video or on the main channel. Now, as of yesterday too, The Last of Us 2 stars blame bots for negative reviews. Interesting that everybody is already calling this the last Jedi of video games. And this is exactly the same thing they did with The Last Jedi. Critics did. Fans did, I'm sorry. With The Last of Us 2 finally released to the public, fans and critic alike seem to be at odds regarding the game's reception with polar opposite scores. Now, two major stars of the game, Laura Bailey and Shannon Woodward, are blaming the negativity on bots. Ooh, bots. The Last of Us Part 2 has received universal acclaim. Everyone keeps using that word, universal acclaim, uh, from the standard games media, bot, with multiple perfect scores and overwhelmingly pra overwhelming praise, earning in a 95 on critic score on Metacritic, which is funny to me because the same sites that will discredit Metacritic because of review brigades also praise it when it agrees with their opinions. However, it can't be said for the user reviews where the tone is completely different. The game sits at an abysmal 3.4. I think it, well, it's at 3.3 right now. Abysmal would be the correct word, with over twice as many negative reviews as positive ones. Taking to Twitter, Shannon Woodward, who voiced and did the mocap for the char character Dina, wrote that there were a lot of very upset bots today, accompanied with the eyes emoji. All the bots replied Laura Bailey, who voices the game's antagonist, Abby, in a sense deleted tweet. Why did you delete that tweet, Abby? Why, oh why? Probably because there are people that genuinely dislike this video game, and when you lump them all in and call them bots and discredit their opinion, well, then it's not exactly going to receive a high quality response from those people. The talk of bots also, by the way, this is via the Serto.com. The talk of bots is likely a reference back to the criticism that faced Star Wars Episode Eight, The Last Jedi, which faced similar situation to The Last of Us Part Two. Yeah, people hated it. I mean, that's, they are exactly the same in that way, that people hated it. Uh, congratulations. You are being compared to the most hated Star Wars film of all time, and that's in a world where episode one exists. Talk of the bots. Oh yeah, with the last shot, I it's received it was received well by critics, but panned by fans. Eventually, leading to some blaming scathing reviews on Russian bots and trolls. Yes, of course, Russian bots really care about user reviews on a video game. However, there are conflicting opinions on whether that was really the case. It wasn't. It isn't conflicting opinions. There is only fact. It will be interesting to see how the public opinion on the game changes as more players experience it for themselves and complete the campaign, which should take anywhere from 20 to 40 hours. Until then, The Last of Us Part 2 is looking like it will be one of the most divisive games in history. I mean, that's a thing, right? Um, that, that That's a thing. I, I suppose you could be happy about that. 
Um, I guess both people bought your game. Then again, as we saw with The Last Jedi, if you put something out that's really divisive, yeah, some people are really going to fall in love with it, but those people that are really mad and feel betrayed by it, they're not coming back. And what good does that do your company then, does it? Uh, now, we see, obviously, the game's media covering it up, saying, gamers are now review brigading The Last of Us 2. Despite receiving widespread critical acclaim, the game Last of Us 2 has been review brigaded by users on Metacritic due to complaints about its story. It's frustrating because so many of these stories are so dismissive. You can say this. Recent games such as Warcraft 3 Reforged have been review brigaded at the same technique the same technique is often used against films and television shows. It's become a frequent way for people to try to attack content creators for taking a political or controversial stance. Incorrect. No. This article is clearly written from the position of agreement, right? They clearly agree with whatever it is the political messaging is around, let's say, The Last of Us 2 or even worse, Star Wars The Last Jedi. And they think that well, it's just because it's political. No, you know why people were pissed off at Warcraft 3? It's because it's a broken mess full of broken promises delivered broken to customers who had their hearts also broken. That's four brokens. That's why that game reviewed so poorly. Don't act like there was some sort of backlash because somebody wore an LGBT pride pin. No, they were pissed because that game was trash. You want to talk about The Last Jedi? Let's talk about The Last Jedi. Yes, they had some overtly woke moments with Captain, Gen Captain Gen Admiral Gen Gender Studies or whatever her name was. And yeah, there was that. But there was also the just spitting on historic the history and the lore of Star Wars, casting aside for a new we know better attitude that isn't received well by fans. And you know what happened after The Last Jedi? Revenue started to dip for Star Wars. And in fact, Solo, a Star Wars story, actually lost money. Now you could say, okay, well, it's not really... A main movie it was more of a one-off side quest so to speak but it lost money and star wars now has a thriving youtube and commentary community built around laughing at it and ripping it apart when that just wasn't the case in the 70s or even the 90s now that disney has taken over and decided that star wars is a commodity no better or no worse than toilet paper fans are pissed because they aren't paying any attention to existing lore so no it's not just because the last of us 2 has some sort of political leanings it's because mostly one because of the leaks and the associated crunch people keep forgetting that two inside those leaks they completely spat on the the memory and the characters in this game from the first one in an effort to be lazily shocking much like the last season of game of thrones yeah daenerys targaryen one of the best characters ever most powerful female characters in any television show ever was reduced to a stereotype piece of garbage in that last season that's the kind of stuff that people are reacting to now when people try to cover for you like this writer at screen rant they're like oh well they don't they're just they're just giving a negative review because one of the characters is trans that's so dismissive and ridiculous are there people that do that i'm sure but it's an enormous enormously small see what i did there a very small percentage of total total reviewers and by the same account there are probably people that just give it a 10 out of 10 because there's representation in it these authors or game journals, hacks, shills, whatever you want to call them, they always seem to forget that they're absolutely positively positive shills in terms of these reviews. Positive bots. We saw all these reviews, positive reviews come out for Captain Marvel suspiciously and all at once. Then we saw Rotten Tomatoes remove the ability for users to score Captain Marvel. Why do you think that that is? Most certainly, all of those negative reviews weren't from bots, but that didn't stop Rotten Tomatoes from deleting all of the reviews. Right now, I have a high suspicion that Metacritic will be deleting these reviews, all right? 3.3, I don't know how low it's gonna go, but at 12,356 reviews, it already has 40%, 35% more reviews, total reviews, than the first game. And the first game sold 17 million copies. Now, Metacritic is obviously a much bigger site nowadays, and there are more things to be annoyed by in the game, but it's just putting it into perspective. Every review, both positive and negative, isn't always about the game. You can simply look at the way Polygon or Kotaku re re review the game. Look at the Polygon review for The Last of Us 2, okay? And tell me that anything about that has to do with the game. 
the entire review was how they didn't like how brutal the game was. They didn't talk about how the gameplay mechanics were good or bad. They didn't talk about, you know, whether the story was good or bad. They talked about how the game was needlessly bleak. And uh, hold on a second. Let me just pull it up. Because they talked about all sorts of things that were completely unrelated to uh, the actual game in any way. So just like your review shills will do that, so will people that are mad at the company for maybe a political statement they make. Ultimately, I still find reviews informative. When I see a game has a 3.4, you know what that tells me? It doesn't automatically tell me the game's bad. It tells me that somebody effed up. Somebody blitz chunged a game. Somebody did Warcraft 3. Somebody cash grabbed. Somebody did something bad. And I'm going to research that. If I see that, oh, it's just because, you know, something that doesn't matter to me, well, it's not going to stop me from buying that game. People are smarter than these game journalists would like to give them credit for. And it's pretty pathetic to see workers and, and uh, people that worked on the game reducing all criticism to mobots. That didn't work in the 2016 presidential election. It didn't work with The Last Jedi. And it's not going to work with The Last of Us 2. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.